<laughs> Muhammad al-Samawi was raised to hate Christians and Jews. But when he was 23, that all changed. But it also put his life in danger. And through a daring plan engineered on social media by a small group of interfaith activists, people who were open-minded to not hating people of other faiths, he was able to escape to freedom. Watch this. Yemen is a very beautiful country. Most of the people in Yemen, their bigger dreams are just to get married and have a house. I was raised in a very educated family. My two parents, my two brothers and sisters are actually medical doctors. They grew up with a common enemy. To understand really what happens and why I was hating Jews and Christians is that when you live in a small country like Yemen, the government, the dictatorship, they don't want you to focus that you don't have hospitals, you don't have, you don't have schools, you don't have democracy. They want you to focus that you have an enemy and you need to put all your energy on that enemy, not on them, not on the government. But after striking up a friendship with a Christian professor named Luke, he had a life-changing book exchange. Luke agreed to read the Quran if Muhammad would read his Bible. I want to say that, aha, I want to say that my book is much better than this book. But when I started reading it, I saw it's how much it's a really beautiful book. I see how much we are similar. I was asking myself why we are fighting each other. Why really there's this, all these wars? And I couldn't get it. It's not about religion. It's not because we are different. It's just because we misunderstand each other. To understand them better, he sought out Christians and Jews on Facebook to talk to. But that resulted in danger for Muhammad. I was the one who's trying to do interfaith between Muslims, Jews, and Christians. And extreme groups, they didn't like that. He received death threats. They accused me of being non-Muslim. I had to leave my city, Sana'a, the capital city. But when I arrived to the other city, which is called Aden, I was actually in the worst situation because I was in the middle of two extreme groups. Extremist groups, including Al-Qaeda, were fighting for the city, and he could not escape the checkpoints. I thought that if I kill myself, it would be easier than Al-Qaeda or any extreme group catch me because they will not just kill you, they will torture you first and then they will kill you. But I had faith. So with his faith, he turned to social media once again. I asked everyone, it was my last hope, I asked everyone on social media, can you please help me? Muhammad al-Samawi chronicles his story in his new book, The Fox Hunt. He's with me now. Muhammad, welcome. Thank you. Thank Great you so to much. see you here, looking very well. Thank you. So you decide, you go from thinking I should just kill myself because I don't want to get tortured and then die, to thinking maybe I can get out of Yemen, maybe I can live and I can live free. What was the most critical step in the process of getting out? I was alone. I was kind of like, you know, hiding in a small bathroom. I didn't have anyone to help me out. But these people who I was reaching on, on Facebook and on the internet, they were kind of like a family to me. They were there for me 24 hours. They were responding to my messages. And that's what gave me faith that, you know, there might be hope that, you know, I would be escaped from the war. And you didn't know these people at all? I met them briefly. Uh, but we've never been like friends. Okay, can, we are friends on Facebook, you can yeah, say. Right. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I never thought that, you know, they would be able really to help me out. But at least they responded yes. They responded yes in the time that I needed someone to say yes. These four relative strangers uh, were responsible for saving Muhammad's life. Three of them are here and will reunite for the first time right after this break. <laughs> So three years ago, Mohammed al-Samawi was surviving on the hope that a group of people he barely knew, a group with no international diplomacy experience, could do the impossible, get him out of a war zone in Yemen to freedom. And they did. Joining me now with Mohammed are Megan Hallahan, Daniel Pincus, and Justin Hefter. Thank you so much for being here. So is this the first time all four of you have been together? Yes. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> wow. Wow. So you were all at a conference years ago in Jordan, uh, and you met, and you just sort of connected and say, hey, and what was the conference about? Uh, peace building conference. Peace building. Okay, so then you go back your separate ways. Uh, two of you live in America. You and a, and a fourth person, Natasha, live in Israel. And you find out from Mohammed, who you stayed in touch with, that he's trying to get out of Yemen. What did you do? 
I emailed everyone I had ever met in my whole entire life, <laughs> and Justin actually responded. And what, and what was your experience? So you hear from Megan, she, she needs so help. Megan says, I have a friend in Yemen who's in danger. She doesn't say who. So I said, you should contact Muhammad al-Samawi. <laughs> 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 Maybe he can help your friend. <laughs> and, and Megan goes, it is Muhammad. <laughs> Unbelievable. So you, you don't know how to extricate someone from Yemen, no. right? You're regular people. You're in your 20s. What, what did you do? How did you figure it out? Uh, well, we started reaching out to our networks. We started connecting with, similar to what Megan did, everybody that we knew mm -hmm. and posted to Facebook. And an amazing thing happened, which is that more people responded and answered our call. Right. Did you believe his life was in danger? Absolutely. Um, I was on the phone with him, and I could hear gunshots, explosions. And um, from what everything that you could read on the news or on social media, it was very clear that there was a, a significant war breaking out. Mm -hmm. And so you ultimately arrange for Mohammed to get on a boat that was headed for Djibouti in Africa. Is that right? Yeah. Can I just ask, how did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> we started connecting with people in different governments, different militaries and different NGOs around the world and working up the chain of command of different organizations. And we led with Mohammed's incredible work, Mohammed's incredible story, and people who you'd never think would step out of their jurisdictions to do something that maybe they weren't supposed to do. People in governments, members of Congress, uh, people in ministries of external affairs in foreign countries ended up saying yes and negotiating with each other to, uh, to help Muhammad escape. I think most of us could not find Djibouti on a map, <laughs> right? I mean, it's like the, the lengths to which you went are extraordinary. And so the, the day comes when you're supposed to get on this boat. How yes. much faith did you have at the moment that you, you would get on it, you'd get out? I was almost losing faith, to be honest with you, because... Um... I was alone in escaping in, an, in a big hotel. I was just in that hotel, and I thought, this is the end. And then they told me that, you know, we are trying to find another way to let you escape. And then they told me about this fishing boat that I need to take to go to the big military operation and to escape to Djibouti. And Daniel, actually, he told me something. He told me, Mohammed, we don't want you to lose you in the port, so I have two advices for you. I want you to keep your battery on because, you know, we don't want to lose your phone. And I want you to take a lot of pictures because I want to see this picture when you come to the United States. <laughs> and uh, you did. How did you wind up here in America? So when I was in Djibouti, uh, again, the four of them, they did another campaign, which is, we want you to come to the United States. Do you want to come to the United States? I said, of course, but how? So they started giving me all these invitations to come to the United States. And I applied for visa, and I came to the United States. And, and how does it feel now, being here? <laughs> it's just an amazing. Um, it's the amazing thing about the United States, that you have the freedom to say whatever you want to say. You have the freedom to be who you are. And you're not afraid that someone will kill you. That's an amazing thing. Uh, you're away from the gun shooting and from the airstrikes that's happening in Yemen until today, unfortunately. Wow. I know you still have family over there. We wish them well and congratulate all of you on an amazing feat. Good for you. All the best to you, Mohammed. And the exciting thing is, Mohammed's book, again, The Fox Hunt, is now being made into a movie. His life story is being made into a movie, and your story, too. Can't wait to see it. All right, and read the book, The Fox Hunt. Uh, don't go away. We'll be right back.